Hey everyone, just adding this here at the beginning of the video because I had already made this video and I didn't really want to make a second video to take this on. But just to quickly cover this, I, as I've been doing CMA updates, uh, there has been an update. The uh, Cat Tribunal for the 23rd has been called off. As we can see here, the Competition tribu uh, Appeal Tribunal has adjourned the Microsoft Activision versus CMA hearing that was scheduled for October 23rd, 2023. That basically means that it's been called off. This is a big sign that we are moving closer to this deal being completed before the October 18th deadline. And as we can see here, uh, it says upon the joint application by Microsoft Corporation, Microsoft, the Competition and Marcus Authority, CMA, and Activision Blizzard, Activision, for orders that these proceedings be stayed and the hearing of the application currently listed to begin on 23rd be adjourned. And it's obviously uh, signed by Mr. Marcus Smith, the Honorable Mr. Marcus Smith. So this here is a clear indication that, you know, everything is moving in the right direction. We could be hearing that the whole situation is concluded pretty much by the end of next week. Uh, you know, it is getting to that point now. And it, you know, after the CMA has turned around to the other uh, people who had concerns and told them that this, you know, the Ubisoft pairing with the, them taking charge of the whole cloud infrastructure for, you know, Activision Blizzard games, in a sense, this actually makes Ubisoft even more powerful and it actually makes even less competition to a certain degree. But you know, whatever it is, uh, that decision to give Ubisoft was the right decision, it seems, because without that, this deal wouldn't have gone through. How the CMA has dictated the world and made every other regulator seem completely redundant is unbelievable. But the CMA got its way. CMA got what it wanted. And it looks like now with this now being adjourned for the second time, I guess, now that this is happening, um, it's... Uh, it's, it, it's a big, big sign that this should be over relatively soon. Right, that's it. I just wanted to get this at the beginning of the video. So on with the actual video that I had planned. I hope you enjoy it. Any questions regarding the Cat Tribunal CMA, do leave a comment below and I will try and get to it as soon as possible. Right, enjoy the rest of the video. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. And we're looking at some Xbox news today. We're talking about what makes an RPG. Uh, because that's become the center of a topic today. And we're going to go through quite a bit of information, so let's get cracking, shall we? All right, so as we can see here with Darius Fears, there's a rumor according to Xbox era, Bethesda's leaked new IP is under Disney. Do you think this will be a Marvel or a Star Wars game? Now, most people actually want this to be a Star Wars-based game. A lot of people are saying it could be a Mandalorian new game, that doesn't follow Din Djarin, but someone else. That could be kind of cool. And others are saying it could go down the Sith path or even uh, Knights of the Old Republic path, considering it was announced for PlayStation and it was indefinitely delayed. Maybe uh, Disney got bored of the actual back and forth with that situation and has decided to take the IP back and give it to Microsoft or Bethesda as it is. So who knows what this could be? It could be a Marvel IP. It could be a Star Wars IP. The rumors are going rampant at the moment. This isn't the Indiana Jones one because that one was already leaked. Well, already on the list. This is one of the unannounced IPs. So it's going to be interesting to see what it actually becomes. Let me know in the comment section below what you think it will be or what you hope it to be. I kind of want it to be a Star Wars game. Uh, I wouldn't mind a Mandalorian game. Um, maybe not a one that follows Din Djarin and Grogu because we've kind of seen that in the TV series. We kind of know how that goes and the path it follows. But maybe a different path. Maybe a different path. Another path as a side story that, hap you know, that is canon to the lore of the Mandalorians. Who knows? Time will tell. But interesting stuff nonetheless. Right, over here we have Nicola, which is really weird because his take here is a bit odd. Bethesda expected to make almost one billion on Starfield, and he says, fascinating. That's over the course of four years too, in comparison, God of War Ragnarok made 770 million in 10 weeks. And some person, uh, E over here says, how much was profit though and I, I said that's the wrong question to ask right 
That's clearly the wrong question to ask. The right question would be, how many of those were forced into into consumers as a bundle as PS5s were not being sold standalone? The number of PS5s that were being sold bundled with God of War was crazy. And there was no way to buy a PS5 at the time without it being a bundle. So how, if you remove those that were forced upon onto the consumer against their will, because not everyone is going to enjoy God of War, right? It doesn't appeal to everyone. So if you remove those that were forced onto the consumer, how many did they actually sell that were retail? That figure is interesting and that money they made is interesting but we'll never get to hear that and uh he never uh deigned to respond to my point as well so i mean i don't think he ever will because as you know with these new blue check marks it just means that uh tweeting something like this will get engagement and that engagement will make him money and he's already said multiple times that he posts controversial things like this in order to make money yes he, that's officially confirmed he actually did say that he doesn't care he just does it to basically make money off people but i thought it was interesting uh, I, I, I thought it was an interesting point that he made but at the same time it's not really going in depth enough and the same thing would i guess apply to starfield they want to make one billion dollars those have to be sales but if they're going to count the number of uh copies being shipped with a console then you kind of have to count the subscription or new subscriptions that are coming in just for starfield to count towards this one billion and i genuinely think that they can actually hit that within not that long of a period time will tell but i thought it was interesting to actually uh break this down because though he was doing it for fanboy reasons there's actually a, a more deeper dive for this and Hopefully, uh, maybe one day he'll respond. I'm not holding my breath. I'll probably end up dying before then. All right, so this is actually uh, coming from Brazil, right? Brazil Game Pass. Um, it's a stop scrolling. Looks like Activision is gearing up for something big. In fact, it looks like all Call of Duty games are coming to Game Pass. Try buying Call of Duty Black Ops 2 and you'll see this message. And it's, uh, where is the message? It looks like it's been removed. But there was a message basically saying that uh, you, you, we know you're buying this game, but you can get it for free through Game Pass. That's essentially what it was saying. Oh, it's you've got it over here as well. Receive this item for free with your gaming subscription. Game Pass. Check out and it's yours forever. Is Xbox Game Pass getting COD games soon? It sure seems that way, especially with Activision Blizzard King acquisition by Microsoft supposedly closing by no later than October 18th of next month. We're less than a month away. Drop your thoughts below. And again, you had the photo, but the photo is, uh, it's gone. But still, it's interesting to know. It's interesting to read. And uh, it looks like with the deal pretty much gone through and it's just waiting to close by the 18th with the CMA still dilly-dallying with their final close-ups. Uh, it looks like Microsoft potentially is working in the background to get things ready set up so they can kind of have a big finish for the new year because what better way to get subscribers to game pass by saying hey you want to play call of duty you want to play activision games like diablo overwatch come to game pass 11 10.99 a month for whatever it costs right now and we will you know you'll get all of these games on the service to play as much as you like you're not really going to get a bigger sell than that right Add to that, you're going to get all the first party Microsoft games as well, like Starfield, Forza. It's actually a really, really enticing thing to have towards the end of the year for those people that are looking to get their kids a Christmas present or, you know, something to game on. Getting a Series S or a Series X and being able to push Game Pass is going to be pretty awesome. Right, so this one over here is actually uh, quite funny. Todd Howard confirms that Starfield Enemies AI is low IQ on purpose. And people have taken this completely drastically the wrong way. Um, they're all like laughing, saying, no way, you know, Todd Howard lied saying all this and all that. But 
that's not remotely what's going on here. LMFAO ain't no way he really said this. And I think this person here, Broman Legion, pretty much sums it up. And I even said, I found someone on the internet, more importantly on Twitter today, who has common sense. Today's a good day. Now he said, not this person said, this is like when they said the bad CGI in the flesh was on purpose. No, no, no. Have you ever played a game where the AI is so unrealistically accurate that it's boring, right? Oh, you have? It's called Destiny Grandmaster? Ah, okay, right. Or like some of those uh, really, really uh, super hard uh, legendary missions in the Division where the, AI, where the AI is so accurate they can shoot you from 75 miles away or from another continent pretty much. In fact, I'm pretty sure on one of the occasions within the Division, one of the NPCs that shot me was on another planet. I think they were on the moon or I'm pretty sure they were on another planet, like Mars, when they took that shot and it still hit me. Pretty convinced. But he says, not even remotely. AI is far more capable than a human in every single measurable metric. True. Except for deep philosophical thinking and novel abstract problem solving. Correct. Every single AI system in every video game that's ever existed can be turned up to 11 to make it completely impossible for any player to ever win for any reason period they can shoot you perfectly from any position going at any speed and from any distance if the developers allowed them to turns out it's not fun to 100 to lose 100 percent of the time i don't know if you realize this but even your favorite video games do it and it's quite sad that people think that this is actually a negative who on earth would want to play a game with laser vision ai it's not fun it's one of the reasons i don't do uh like grandmaster uh, but, you know, Nightfalls, I mean, I don't play Destiny anymore, pretty much, but, you know, it's not fun when the enemy has laser vision, and you can just see that laser on you, just following you everywhere you go, no matter how you try to dodge, it's just following you glued onto your head like an aimbot, and that's essentially what it is, because they've cranked it up so high, it's not fun, it's boring, and the fact that they have that, they can do that, it's, in my opinion, hinders the game, but, I'm happy that they don't do that on Starfield. I think it's a good thing. So this one here is uh, really interesting, right? Dear God, Reforge Gaming legit has said that Spider-Man and Ghost of Tsushima were open world action RPGs. I can't right now, LMFAO. And I, I think I'm not even going to play any of the clips because I don't want to give him any uh, attention in terms of that. But at the same time, he is saying that Spider-Man is an RPG. And people are now agreeing with him that, you know, it is an RPG. And now they're complaining that Witcher is an RPG. And he, you know, this person here is trying to compare The Witcher 3 as an RPG to Spider-Man. And then you come down here and it says, an RPG is literally a role-playing game. You play a role, Spider-Man, you play a, is a role, you, you play a role. Spider-Man, you play a story-driven action game. You are not playing world. World, you're not making dialogue choices. It's a shame to call Spider-Man on an RPG. I think that is correct. I, don't, I would never call Spider-Man an RPG because it is not. You're literally playing the role of Spider-Man and dialogue choices are irrelevant to what is considered an RPG. So let's just say that Reforge Gaming here in his infinite wisdom is correct. That you can call anything an RPG, right? Okay, uh, g g get ready for this chat because uh, I'm about to blow your minds off. Because I'm about to redefine what an RPG actually is, right? So, are you ready? My response to this dude. I think racing games should be classed as an RPG too. As you're playing the role of the driver. If, Spider -Man, if you're playing the role of Spider-Man... And that counts as a role-playing game. So technically, my definition here should count, right? Pac-Man is an RPG too, as you play the role of Pac-Man while you're eating all those yellow biscuits, right? Those yellow dots taste good. You're playing the role of Pac-Man, so it's an RPG. Microsoft Flight Simulator is an RPG too. You get to play the role of a pilot. 
let's just say every game is an RPG and move on. Because if that is your definition of an RPG, you play the role, well, you play the role of every single character in every single video game. Whether it's a human or an entity or a cat or a dog, it doesn't matter. You're still playing the role of that person you're or that thing you're controlling. Which then means by this, you know, absolutely retarded definition that every game out there, be it a racing game, be it a stickman game, be it Pong, because you're even on Pong, you're playing the role of the sliders, right? You're still playing the role of it going beep, beep, beep. You're still playing that role of the slider going up and down. That would, by the definition of this guy and this dude, be an RPG. I mean, you can't make this shit up. You can't make it up. Like, really, you cannot make it up. It's so stupid. I mean... The level of stupidity out there is is getting quite sad. It is. It, it, it's 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 getting bad. It's really really getting bad. But the shit takes of this guy is getting worse. But look, if Spider Man is gonna be an RPG, Forza Horizon is an RPG. Pac Man is an RPG. You know, Microsoft Flight Simulator, as I say here, is an RPG. Any game you want out there is an RPG. If if that's what they if that's if that's what they really want, because that's just stupid to me uh his response to me down here was about me having no brain cells because what i'm saying doesn't make sense and clearly he's saying you you're literally playing the role of spider-man so if you're playing the role of spider-man why can't i play the role of a driver and make it an rpg i've just used his terminology against him and his response was wow that reused argument took all those brain cells huh i mean clearly uh a typical pony response, right? A butthurt typical pony response. I'm pretty sure now this Harley Sanchez is going to rush off to Butthurt City to ask all his pony friends to come up with a much more glorious response to come at me. But I will be prepared because I have butthurt protection. There is no way that his buttheredness can attack me. But, you know, what I said over here is factually correct if what they're saying is true. Obviously, what I'm saying is not factually correct because what they're saying is not true, but they are so buttered that they don't have an RPG and that the next one coming their way isn't until next year. And Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is going to be a good game. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to enjoy it. But, my God, this Harley Sanchez, you are literally playing the role of Spider-Man? You are an RPG? That is the definition, so... If that's the definition, my definition stands true. Am I right or wrong, chat? Am I right or wrong? You let me know in the comment section below. That's the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Remain legend.